goodness as a fruit of the Spirit. That is our topic today, taken from Galatians 5, 22 to 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. It's a joy to know that many of us are excited to study the Word of God, and we are privileged to share it. This is Sam Dorelio, a deacon of Manila Baptist Church. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Lord, please continue to bless us in this study and give us thankful hearts and minds to appreciate your goodness to us in every way. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. In our last study, we talked about kindness as a fruit of the Spirit. Before that, we talked about gentleness, which we identified as the fifth fruit. Actually, both are one and the same. The King James Version uses gentleness, while the NIV and most other versions use kindness. However, I did not want to miss the lessons of kindness apart from gentleness, so we studied both character traits, which are actually the fifth fruit in the order. Today, we will study the sixth fruit, which is goodness. The dictionary defines goodness as the quality of being morally good or virtuous, synonymous with righteousness and morality. On this basis, we observe a lot of people who are really good by nature, attitude, and temperament. In fact, other people would say that they are more good or better than some Christians. Yet Isaiah 64, 6 says that all our righteousness are like filthy rags, and that there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, 10 to 18. We should be good because God is good all the time and in any circumstance. If we are believers, God has promised his goodness to us. Psalm 31.19 says, Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and worked for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. This means that whatever happens in our lives, however horrible or bad it may seem, God ultimately intends it for our good. In the Bible, the goodness of God often refers to his gracious generosity in providing abundantly for mankind's needs and benefits. Psalm 23, 6, Psalm 65, 11. Most often, we associate God's goodness with what we perceive to be positive things, his blessings, as we say. We fail to see his hand in things and circumstances that do not favor our position or situation in life. Therefore, we are reluctant to accept them as from the Lord. It is good then to be reminded of Job's rebu rebuke to his wife when he said, What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil misfortune? Job 2.10 Then it can also refer to God's generous mercy and patience in that he withholds judgment to allow more time for sinners to repent, Romans 2.4. But God's goodness is much more than those things. It is the very essence of God's nature, His righteousness and holiness. In Ephesians 5.9, we see that His goodness is closely associated with righteousness and truth. Goodness is a fruit of the Spirit. If we are saved, the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. As a result, we should be people who overflow with goodness. As we come to know God more and more, the Holy Spirit will change us. Goodness becomes part of who we are. With the Spirit living inside of us, He gives us the power to do good. As a fruit of the Spirit, we need to cultivate goodness in order to produce it. We need to make a deliberate effort into how we speak 
and act towards other people. We should ask ourselves how we would feel if people treat us in the same way that we treat them. Jesus wanted his disciples to bear much fruit, John 15, 8, including goodness. Being fruitful requires action, knowing the right thing to do and then doing it. As James wrote, be doers of the word, James 1, 22. Simply abstaining from evil and doing nothing is not good enough. Do something positive about the evil that we see. In the Bible, Jesus went about doing good, Acts 10.38. We too should do the same. God bless everyone.